Good evening, everyone. Not quite doctor yet, unfortunately. I've just realised I'm the only non-medical person speaking tonight, so I'm going to have to explain a little bit about why I'd be interested in all this healthcare stuff. Um, my talk tonight is about joining the dots in an integrated healthcare system in Malawi. And one of the things we're interested in as information systems researchers is how we can use computers and technology in an integrated fashion to join together things that are disconnected. Now, Joe talked to you about the tragic story about Chimemwa, and his speech is very much about a healthcare system that's not only inadequate, but very disconnected. So what I'm going to do tonight is show you some pictures of Malawi as well. I was there about 15 months ago, and these pictures are going to tell you a couple of stories. One is the stereotypical traditional view of an African country, um, and the others are of an African country or a Malawi that you might not think exists. And the final story then maybe is how we can take some of this technology and put it together to change Chimemwa's story and other children's stories for the future. So this is Malawi. It's a long country north to south. It's landlocked, which is why fuel is so expensive because they've got to truck it in by tanker. It's got a lovely long lake, Lake Malawi there. Joe so showed you some nice pictures. It's beautiful. This is where all the backpackers go. They turn up and onto this lovely beach. This is um, Chikali Beach. The beer is nice and cold. I had a very quick one in about 20 minutes in an otherwise very busy week. Um, and it looks lovely and idyllic and everything. That's not the real picture. Here's another picture of a lady carrying, I don't know whether it's water, or it's probably dry goods actually on her head, so she's got wonderful posture. It's a, a very basic country, as Joe said, it's very far down the development index. The agriculture is subsistent, and so it's marginal. If the weather goes wrong, they have a dry season, they have a rainy season, they have a windy season. If any, any of that goes out of kilter, people starve. The government gives villagers two bags of seed every year to grow their crops. So, it's a system that's very sensitive to environmental impact. There are no cars. Well, there are cars, but they're not running because the fuel's too expensive. When I was there, a cargo train was just stopped on the tracks because they had no diesel for the locomotive. So bicycles are used. You saw the picture of the pregnant lady going to hospital on a bicycle. Very frequently, you'd see bicycles with a nice little padded seat where we'd have the carrier so you could carry a passenger. That's not an uncommon sight at all. And here we have a mother and child. Now, they look fairly healthy, but more than likely she has HIV. So she's attending the antiretroviral clinic to try and take drugs so her baby doesn't get HIV from her. The mortality rate is shockingly high, so high that some of these children don't even get names until they're five years old. They just don't have them because they don't want to countenance the idea of naming a child and then losing it later on. And here's an older child who luckily enough has survived you know, up to seven or eight years. And with everybody thinking about presents from Santa at this time of year, this young fellow has a car that he's made himself out of, I, I couldn't tell you, wire and string, maybe. It's a toy car. It's hard to tell in this diagram, but there's the steering wheel and there's wheels there, and this is the toy he has. This is what they've got. And this is the local market in Mzuzu where we are uh, with Christina's hair and beauty salon. I have no idea how good it was. I didn't go in there. Um, but a lot of the services offered are fairly rudimentary. You could buy almost anything there, but this is the sort of thing, it's, it's poor. And these are some school children. There are schools everywhere, rather than run by churches. Malawi's a Christian ch country, predominantly Christian, a small percentage of Muslims, and then a smaller percentage of something else. Um, but there are a lot of church-run schools. These school children were absolutely thrilled to see a white boy there and all came running over to say hello and got absolutely mobbed. I should have brought the video, actually. And this is a clinic. This is the sort of rural clinic that doctors like Joe are working in and doctors locally are working in. It's made of straw. One strong wind, it would blow away. So you set up, a doctor comes out, maybe from a hospital or as a visiting doctor from another country. 600 patients turn up in the morning sun absolutely blazing out of the sky. They can maybe see 300 because it takes so long to triage the patients. So you're sending 300 patients away at the end of the day. What are they going to do? Are they going to come back another day? Are they going to trek in for the village for four hours? So there's a huge overload in the system. All these people need attention and there's not enough capacity to deal with it. Technologically, Malawi's not that great, at least on the surface. This is what remains of their landline network. 
I don't know what happened to the wires. Copper is an expensive metal, so it was probably stolen. I took this picture in Catig Bay. It was the one little bit of evidence I saw of a landline phone network. I certainly didn't see any other evidence while I was there. And all that remains is those few tangles of wire there. And the other problem is environmental. Um, this is a 50,000 acre forest that was planted by the British. Malawi was formerly known as Nyasa land. So if you like, this is a relic of empire where they planted 50,000 hectares of trees and they're busy cutting them down, mainly because of government corruption and logging companies getting the business, also because they're cutting down the trees to burn them to make clay bricks for their houses, which we saw all over the place. So these are all stereotypical images of a country living on the edge, technologically not that advanced, struggling to get by, relying on foreign help. So let me tell you a slightly different story about a country that you may not have seen. This is... Um, in Kata Bay, sorry, it's in Chintete Rural Hospital. It's a small hospital, it's got several wards. The operating theatre, I'm not kidding, had a bicycle in it and two surgeon wellies and no evidence of medical equipment whatsoever. I think there might have been a table in the corner. However, here's another one of those masts. Okay, that's a mobile phone mast. There's microwave uplinks back up to the next mast in the chain. And here's another mobile phone mast. Now, we're all used to seeing those in Ireland. We've got a 3G mobile system. It's reasonably good. The surprising thing is Malawi has one as well, and it works really well. In the cities, it's proper 3G, video, everything you want. Out in the countryside, not quite as fast, still pretty good. So let me show you another map of Malawi, different from the traditional one. This is a mobile phone coverage map from TNM, one of the mobile operators. So those green areas are the coverage area. It's not complete yet, but it's still pretty good. Ireland looked like this several years ago. Gaps out in the country were used to losing the signal. So this is no worse than Ireland was five, ten years ago, and it's only going to get better. They're not bothering with landlines. Why build them? They're too expensive. Build a mobile network. It's cheaper. 83% coverage over the country. I was talking to somebody in G4S where they've got security staff out there. They said they had people turning up without shoes for job training. They had mobile phones. If they wanted to get credit for their phone, remember they don't have a lot of money, there was ladies at the side of the street with baskets of mobile phone vouchers, scratch off the number, key it in, you're making phone calls. So they all have phones. Can we do something useful with them? Here's a computer lab in the middle of Mzuzu. Um, the offices next to it were straw huts. But here we've got people with donated laptops learning how to write their CVs, and I'll use the computers and, and use Microsoft Word and stuff. Cleanest, best-run computer lab I've ever seen, with apologies to the computer center here. It was fantastic, mainly because the students treated it with respect. It was run by a lady called Rose who was absolutely fearsome. And all of the, these are teenagers. This is run by Ungueru, which is a non-governmental organization which does social and community building. And they were teaching these students the skills, hopefully, to get on in life. And here's another computer, and this was put in by a company, or actually an NGO called Luke International Norway. This is in an ART clinic. Now, an ART clinic delivers antiretroviral treatments to pregnant moms so they don't pass HIV from mother to child. If you look very carefully, you can't see it. It looks a bit haphazard. That's a fingerprint scanner. Every patient turns up, gets their thumb scanned. So when the patient comes back, their thumb is scanned again. They know who's been... Knows, uh, and they know who's coming back. That's a big deal in Malawi where the paper patient passports they issue get lost all the time, and half the time the people can't remember what their name is. Now, I'm not trying to be funny, but they will give different names on different occasions, so they can track patients. There's a printer there that prints barcodes because if the computer system ever goes down, they have a paper filing system, which is really simple, highly standardized, and very efficient, with just a green form, a pink form and a yellow form, depending on how the patient is progressing through the system. We saw two of these clinics, exactly the same system in both. If only the HSC would do the same thing here with its hospitals. Okay. One of the beauties about Malawi is they don't have to unlearn all the mistakes that we've learned and made. They don't have to accept the less than adequate technologies and processes we've worked our way through and made the mistakes. So this is why they're jumping landlines to mobile phones. So if we can introduce something technologically that they can use, we can join their health system back up together. Better still, they can do it themselves with the technology we can teach them how to use. Here's a mobile phone. It's, a, you know, it's, a, it's just a Nokia. The mobile phones, believe it or not, are fairly cheap, 10 or $15. Now, okay, that's three weeks wages, but it's not impossible to get them. 
or you look for charitable donations to provide phones to people, which is one of the things we're looking at at the moment. So suppose we could put apps on those phones to give people access to the tools they need to look after patients. So here's an example of an app we're developing in the Health Information Systems Research Centre. This one's actually being deployed in Nimerick. It's for tracking, it's just moving the patient chart from paper to a tablet. So what we're proposing to do is take a cheap Android mobile phone and develop apps for enhancing patient care. And the first one is going to be called EIMCI, which is an electronic version of integrated management of childhood illnesses. Now, that paper document, which Joe's mentioned, is a fantastic piece of work from the World Health Organization, but it looks like a telephone directory. It takes nurses about 11 days to learn how to use it training-wise. It's way too bulky to bring into the field, and it's too vulnerable. But there's nothing to stop us putting it on a phone. You know, it's a perfect app to develop, and it's not that expensive to do. Imagine if your local health worker in the village had that. Instead of wondering what's wrong with the child or being helpless to do something, that they could at least arrive at a provisional diagnostic. Here are sensors being developed in Tyndall. Now, these have a long way to go, but suppose we had simple wireless sensors for the clinics. Ones that could be slapped on a patient, get a fast diagnostic, move to the next patient, establish if the patient is a serious condition, speed up triage. This is a Raspberry Pi computer, and I have one here with me. It's a little educational computer built in the UK, but the beauty of it is, is it consumes only about two watts of power, and you can run simple office applications on it. It's also cheap and easy to replace. So if it consumes so little electricity, remember that Malawi doesn't have a lot of electricity, but it does have sunshine, we can power the computer with something like this. This is a 20 watt solar panel, just about enough to power the computer and then charge up a battery and maybe have some lighting at night. Okay. So now we can put computers in the clinic, out in the middle of the field. They're cheap enough to replace if they get lost. There's no moving parts, nothing much to go wrong with them. Dust will eventually get them, we can replace them. It's no big deal. We could connect them to the internet using a 3G dongle to the mobile phone network. I'm already talking to TNM in Malawi about supplying 3G dongles so we can actually equip some of these so we can then connect the computers into an internet. Maybe we could connect them to a patient database that we can build. And there's the solar panel again. And that actually is the sister of one of these. Went out of my suitcase to Malawi 15 months ago. Caused all sorts of grief with customs and airlines. But it does work. And I was able to prove at least that I could power up a couple of small computers using a battery, a charger, and the solar cell. So that actually remained in Malawi. It was taken over by the Unguero NGO. It's used as a mobile phone charging station during the day. They make money out of it. And then at night, it's used to light LED lighting in a local community center. Now, this is a drone. It's not used for dropping bombs on people or for surveillance or anything. This is called Amelia. It's a project, it's still in its early stages and it's about 18 months away from being deployed. But we hope to use it to carry drugs and lightweight, high value medical supplies. One of the big problems is, is with the vaccine supply chain. They're not stored in proper, in proper environments. So how about we hold the vaccines and the antibiotics in the larger hospitals where we can refrigerate them, fly them out to villages, just before they need it. Effectively, it's a just-in-time supply chain provided by drone. Now, this is a prototype. We're still testing it. My daughter, Alice, who's in the audience here tonight, did a lot of the assembly work on it herself, and she's probably going to end up doing more work on it next year if she's most unfortunate. Um, but we do hope to move these out to Malawi within two years and start doing test runs out to clinics. It has a range of about 20 kilometers. That'll get better, but it's enough for a start. And that's just a control unit. It can be flown manually or it can be flown under GPS guidance. Better still, it can be connected to the mobile phone network while it's flying. So it tells us where it is, how it's going. It can monitor the temperature of the drugs it's transporting. It could bring blood samples back from clinics to hospitals. Okay? So its carrying capacity isn't that great, but when a life is at stake, it would be useful. And here is just um, some Infanrix um, 5 and 1 vaccines. They're grand and lightweight, and we can use those, we can carry those on the drone. Now, none of that's useful unless we know where all the clinics are and everything is. So a transition year student, Darren Neville, came in during the summer to map all of this stuff out for me. And here is another map of Malawi showing where all the clinics are. 
So this is on Google Earth. There's 840 clinics. We know where all of them are. We know the GPS coordinates for all of them. We know the accuracy of how they're plotted. We're going to use this data to plan our drone flights, but also for the more you know, regular technologies like using mobile phone apps. Um, so this is a really valuable database built for us in about two weeks during the summer. Um, and we're going to use this for our research this um, next year. Now, so let me conclude by retelling Chichemwa's story. Chichemwa suffers from pneumonia. Her mother is obviously worried. She goes to the local healthcare worker in her village. The local healthcare worker only has antibiotics, but that healthcare worker has a mobile phone with a data connection back to the mobile network and a patient database and access to the local hospital over a free hotline. So no danger of not being able to make a phone call. We're already talking to a mobile operator in Malawi about providing phones with that sort of payment structure. Phones the hospital. No, better still, uses the EMC, EIMCI app to run a diagnostic on the child first, reaches a tentative diagnosis that it might be pneumonia and serious, phones the hospital because she's concerned. Somebody at the hospital says, right, let's get you some antibiotics out to you now, hydrate the child as best you can, fires up an Amelia drone at the hospital, dials in the GPS location of the village because the phone they're using, they all have GPS now, so the location's been reported. At the same time, the app has reported the diagnostic back to the hospital. It's gone into a patient database. That's the bit that holds everything together. It's the technology you can't see. Amelia flies out, takes 20 minutes to get there with the antibiotics, stabilizes Chichemwe. Now, the next day, when Chichemwe is feeling a little bit better, they have no choice but to go to the clinic. Anyway, so it is a four-hour slog over the mountains to the clinic, but at least now the child is feeling a bit better, gets to the clinic, the clinic computer, they look up her status and get her history and then put her on a proper course of medication. That child didn't need to die of pneumonia. None of these children need to die of pneumonia or any other illness. With this sort of technology, with a connected health system, none of them need to die again. Thank you.